Hello and welcome to India's Eye. US President Donald Trump's abrupt announcement in March of slapping steel and aluminum tariffs on a whole host of trading partners has already led to retaliatory shots being fired by the European Union, Canada and Mexico. After the US announcement on June 15th that it would impose a 25% tariff on $50 billion worth of Chinese imports, Beijing has announced reciprocal tariffs on an equivalent amount of US goods. In the case of India, as duties hiked by the US on its steel and aluminum exports would have implications of about $241 million, New Delhi has also decided to withdraw concessions of similar amount from 30 products imported from the US. The net result is that tensions between the United States and many of its trading partners have spiked dramatically in the recent weeks. To discuss the implications of this tariff war, we have with us a very distinguished panel of experts. We have with us Ambassador Dinkar Khuller, a distinguished diplomat and an expert on trade. He was India's ambassador to the EU and to Australia, uh, to Austria, I beg your pardon. He's a multi-skilled diplomat who has also worked in the Ministry of Finance besides the Ministry of External Affairs as well as the Prime Minister's office. We have with us uh, Professor Manoj Pant, an expert on international trade. He's director of Indian Institute of Foreign Trade in New Delhi. He's also a professor at the Center for International Trade and Development at the Jawaharlal Nehru University in New Delhi. And we have with us my old friend, Professor Vishwajit Dhar, another eminent trade expert. He's professor at the Center for Economic Studies and Planning, Jawaharlal Nehru University. Earlier, he was director general, research and information systems for developing countries, New Delhi. I welcome you gentlemen to this discussion. Uh, Ambassador Kula, let me begin with you. Do you think that the Trump administration's declaration of tariff war against friends and foes alike came as much of a surprise to people? Or did people think that he talks big and he would not do any of these things? Uh, I would argue that uh, people were prepared for problems. But uh, the understanding uh, would have been, uh, in the government of India at least, that many of these measures would probably not have been implemented. They would probably be threats rather than uh, worked deals. Uh, it is a, a pretty serious business, as we all know. But uh, he seems to be going ahead <laughs> uh, with whatever he chooses to do. Um, and uh, I would argue that uh, he will pr probably learn a lesson from what he is doing <laughs> and will have to retract at some stage. No, but earlier he did things that seemed convenient. For example, uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. That treaty was not going to pass through Congress, so it was easy for him to get out of it. No, no, NAFTA, he has not uh, been able to renegotiate it. No, but he had said 45% uh, tariff on all Chinese goods. So people thought he was talking big. No, no, he's talking big. He walked out of uh, TPP. TTIP was anyway going nowhere. So I think politically, uh, many of these agreements were in any case no. not working. Uh, he needed them for, I mean, the previous administration needed them. He felt that he didn't need them. I, I have a feeling that he is uh, not going to retract. His, um, it's, going to be a, it's going to be a difficult time, and particularly for us. Okay. Uh, Professor Pant, do you think that uh, uh, President Trump's moves are uh, reckless? Or is he working to a plan he already knows? Uh, he has a fairly good idea of where he's going and how his trading let partners be, are going to react. Let me be a devil's advocate here mm -hmm. and say he's actually doing a lot of political rhetoric. Let me explain why. If you look at on record, as of today morning at least, nothing has been notified. The only notified tariffs in the US has been on 800 something odd products on $34 billion worth of goods imports, mainly TVs, some high tech goods affects India. That's the only thing and the customs have been told to start collecting tariffs from uh, duties from 6th of July. As far as I'm aware, even the others have not been notified yet. Apart from the stories you hear, they'll give exemption to Mexico. So I think he's bargaining, he's a businessman. And the other thing, by the way, I just mentioned, I'll elaborate more. He's also said, asks his guys to find out which are the products where we don't have any substitute. Because he's careful what impact can have on domestic consumers. He's scared of his domestic politics, not national politics. Does he care about world trade? No. No American president ever has in history. But I think still political rhetoric. Professor Dhar, uh, what is the basis of Trump's claim that um, 
trade wars are good. That's what he said. <laughs> now, they, are they good negotiating postures? Or, or are they intrinsically good for a, a big trading country like the US? Uh, because that kind of rhetoric gives it greater negotiating power when you renegotiate these deals. Yeah, I think, you know, for whatever we have seen in the last one and a half years, uh, Trump uh, likes chaos. And, and uh, he wants to create a kind of a, a situation where, uh, you know, people are running helter skelter. And then he would try to find some kind of a negotiating, uh, uh, you know, sort of bargain or a negotiating counter like Manoj is mentioning. And, and then try to come to some kind of an, you know, working arrangement with, with, the, with, the, with the trading partner. Now, look at, look at uh, you know, case of India. Now, uh, it's not just Trump, but even the previous administrations had this issue of the trade deficit that U.S. has vis-a-vis -vis India. And for a long time, you know, this uh, issue has been there in the bilateral uh, discussions that India does not import enough from the U.S. Uh, and, you know, we should be importing enough. And there was pressure on us to import agricultural commodities, for instance. Now, that was a, that something which was uh, a clear no for us. You know, we can't just afford to import agricultural commodities. And, and you know, the uh, US doesn't really have anything else to offer. The manufacturer is, manufacturing is completely gone. So if you're looking at mer merchandise trade, then it's only agriculture. So the only way to get you know, India to talk to US is to create a situation where you, you know, uh, uh, have this kind of an action taken against uh, India so that, you know, and we have a bilateral sort of uh, process just on, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Suresh Prabhu is going to go to, the, to Washington to talk to uh, you know, uh, the U.S. authorities. So the timing is also important, you know, so he's actually uh, pro uh, created the situation where the Indian government will now have to, you know, uh, will be forced to talk uh, and and find some way, otherwise... But how can, okay, I, I understand the Indian point of view. How can you do the same thing with Canada? How can you do the same thing with EU, with Mexico, with Turkey, NAFTA. with you know, each, China? For each, each of the partners, there is a, there is a uh, uh, you know, uh, there is a context. Uh, he didn't like, uh, Trump, for instance, never liked NAFTA. So he wants to renegotiate NAFTA. So he's actually, uh, you know, slapped this on, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then with European Union, the trans... Atlantic relations were never, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, settled. And then with other, with China. So if you look at the, the countries which he has actually targeted, there is a context to it and he is actually going after them with a very clear, you know, objective in my view. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Kula, uh, uh, President Trump's previous restrictions, um, uh, trade restrictions like tariffs on solar panels, washing machines, which were announced in January, were well within the framework of the WTO. Okay. Why then was the decision to impose tariffs on steel and aluminium justified on national security grounds? Not true. That's always allowed. That's it's under the law that is always allowed because both the WTO regulations and their own act yeah. allows for national security concerns. Whether aluminium and steel should be or should not be, I don't no, want to go into that. May I just uh, 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 ask you this, but isn't there a difference between the WTO definition of national security is far narrower than the one that is being used by Trump. In WTO, it's to do with to deal with emergencies, wars, and weapons, nuclear trade, for example. But uh, in US, you are actually using national security to impose tariffs on, on vehicles, on cars. Well, How is that justified? Uh, uh, it is uh, national security is provided for in WTO. It is, but I'm saying with a very narrow definition. Yeah, yeah. but uh, the, uh, since anyway he is not interested in the WTO, you can take him to WTO, what do you do about it? The question is going to be, how do you react? Uh, what is the reaction and what is the reaction time? At present, I think it's only at the investigation stage in the WTO. <coughs> uh, but the reality is that this is politics. This is not... Uh, Canada, I mean, Canada, uh, uh, the steel is very simple. NAFTA, as you mentioned, that uh, NAFTA has to be... He is not a buyer into any of these deals. I have different views, which I would not uh, express right now, on uh, how it will affect the American economy. But the reality is that uh, he actually believes that what he is doing has the backing of the people who have voted him into power. Yeah. That is eventually what all do. We are doing the same thing in India. 
Now, uh, uh, Professor Pant, can you conflate uh, uh, economic security concerns with national security concerns? Let and do you do disservice to both by conflating them as, let me first, as uh, Trump is doing? Let me first actually look into this a few days back. Let me correct the misconception. They are actually not using the National Security Act. They haven't even notified any of the duties of the WTO first. In any case, far as I'm aware, they are going to do it under the Safeguards Act. Safeguard allows you to do this, and you've got three years. India's response, by the way, has also been under safeguards. So the National Security Act is more a media creation, speculation. We don't know what they're going to use, but as far as I'm aware, they're going to use the Safeguards Act which allows you to do this and then you prove duty. And India's, by the way, duty that imposes also under the safeguards. So we are, so both countries are sort of working within the WTO without telling the WTO anything about it. That, when they do that, I really don't know. So you believe that uh, Trump is still acting within the WTO framework or is he outside it already? No, he is already outside it. Yeah. I think he never believed in the WTO. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, ever since uh, Trump came to, uh, you know, administration came, came to power, uh, they have been neglecting the WTO, you know, so yeah. they actually did everything possible uh, to uh, really wreck the Buenos Aires Ministerial by not really participating yeah. in it. You know? and, and what they did, actually, you know, the national security issue that you're mentioning, it came out of the statement that he made when he was announcing Correct. the steel and aluminum Correct. tariffs. Correct. He said, I'm doing it in national security interest, but there was nothing that he said was related to what WTO. Right. Uh, uh, right. Means uh, right. so there is a right. there is a clear uh, you know uh, uh, gap between what he intends doing and he was actually pandering to the the domestic Good. constituency Absolutely. that I'm looking after your interests nothing to do with the WTO so uh, you know here uh, uh, Trump thinks that you know uh, he will be able to do like uh, many other past administrations did that they would be uh, able to set new standards. Uh, uh, within the WTO, and uh, and 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 uh, and then ride rub shot because yes. now they have actually you know interestingly uh, after almost wrecking Buenos Aires Ministerial, the U.S. Uh, is now coming back to the WTO you know on on issues like e-commerce and all they are now wanting to negotiate these issues. So my sense is that they are now s setting their own Agenda. benchmark, and they are saying look this is what we want. And let WTO accept what you are saying. How much can uh, WTO uh, accept Ambassador Kuller? Because by exempting South Korea, Australia, Argentina, and Brazil from the uh, steel and aluminium Correct. tariff hike, uh, is, is the US not already outside the WTO system? Because WTO does not permit discriminatory behavior. The reality is that, uh, as both my colleagues have pointed out, that the uh, American administration, and I talk of the top, not the Department of State and others, is that the WTO is irrelevant. For them, it doesn't count. Uh, and incidentally, just as an observation, uh, I made this remark years ago when there was a contest for election of the DGWTO. I was still in government at that time. And I said, it's irrelevant who becomes, because it's not going to run. It simply doesn't run. He doesn't believe in these systems. Whether he changes his position or not is uh, subject to his remarkable behavior. So but, but it is, he's not looking at consistency or inconsistency with WTO, in my view. See, actually, this is what I'm trying to clarify. At the moment, it's not clear, is he anti-WTO or not, because he hasn't notified anything of WTO first. Secondly, you see, Trump says something and then leaves his admin to figure out, okay, now find out how you can do it. As far as I'm aware, I may be wrong. He hasn't still they, appointed an uh, ambassador. He never will. But that is also quite irrelevant in his calculation. I think they have discovered that the only way they could try to come back to WTO with this is as a, as a safeguard measure. And again, as I said, the Indian government actually being quite smart. They have notified theirs under safeguard, which they can. Except that you have to prove there was an injury, all that usual but stuff. But come, come July 6th, yeah. Can he actually implement those uh, uh, increased tariffs without bothering about the That's WTO? What, uh, he can, but if someone, because those tariffs are part of commodity they already listed in the WTO. So he has bound tariffs and he's going above them, unlike India, which has bound tariffs much higher than notified. So if in July 6th, which as of that I know for a fact, he has said tariff custom people to collect tariff uh, revenues from July 6th, mostly on Chinese goods, some Indian, then you have to take him to WTO. If you accept it, there's no problem. 
but you have to take him there. WTO does not take. Agree. My view is he's going to implement them. Yeah. You will take him to WTO. He's not interested. He will implement what he wants. Our worry, I think, the, I, uh, I should be you. on GSP. Yeah. GSP is a, well, GSP is We've been graduated some, outside yeah. Yeah. EU. Not all, not all commodities. EU? Some? EU. Uh, EU, yes, I know. EU, we've been graduated yeah. out. Okay. We, uh, Professor uh, Dhar, um, if this uh, uh, escalation tariffs actually takes place on the ground, do you think it could uh, grow into a full-fledged trade war? And what would be the consequences of that? So oh, uh, I think it's too early to say that because I think you know it's uh, you know looking at a very limited landscape, and uh, it's not that everyone is hitting out against uh, each other. Yeah. It's just the U.S. which is doing it, and and others are uh, merely responding to the U.S. And uh, again, I think um, uh, um, I think all other countries uh, would be sensi sensible enough uh, to respond proportionately. You know, uh, uh, because uh, I don't think, uh, you know, uh, it, it makes any sense to go... Uh, Proportionate is one thing, strategic is quite another. Yeah, so let me come why, why, why this is uh, the thing. Because India has actually had uh, many, uh, many more provocations from the U.S. The, the, the most important of that, of uh, those being the attack, the direct attack that has been launched by the U.S. on farm subsidies. Yeah? So there's, a, there's a, a, a substantive paper which was submitted. And again, you know, what, what the U.S. again administration is trying to do is to call uh, our subsidies that we give to our agriculture, which is, is completely WTO consistent. They're calling it, uh, uh, they, 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 they're actually called call foul. And what they want to do is to bring this into the WTO, get the other countries who are also have the similar views like Australia, Brazil, and others, and, and then target Indian market, agricultural market, because if you can actually uh, attack India's subsidies and bring that down, this market is going to open up. So, but I'm saying that, you know, I, I hope Indian government actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, acts sensibly, because uh, there could be a, uh, you know, a, a, a temptation, because it is agriculture, uh, to really, you know, uh, go overboard. Let's talk of uh, strategic retaliation. Now, China, for example, has, is targeting products such as soya bean and vehicles, which could hit the political nerve in the United States. So are others also doing such strategic targeting? Because EU, for example, on uh, Florida thing. orange juice. Yeah. Meat, uh, meat also. Meat, meat, uh, meat, meat, and meat. Everyone, I think, is doing it. But let's, the game. let's be careful on strategic consequences. For us, the strategic consequences are major. Uh, we are playing with a large surplus in our trade with the United States. We are very keen on having a large number of Indians wanting uh, visas there. It's we much. are not going to play games on this strategic because after the Korea summit with the <coughs> North Koreans, uh, it is not beyond Trump to say, I will sort out South Asia problems. So strategically, I think, unlike others, we will have to play a very, very careful game okay. at this point of time. Trade diplomats often get rigid. I have vast experience with them, yeah. in my, and they've done it very well by India's side, but they get very rigid. There are many other byplays, yeah. uh, and uh, as you mentioned strategic, I'll be very simple. Uh, the Chinese will be only too happy mm -hmm. to see us having a problem absolutely, with the Americans. Absolutely, absolutely. And we are, have to balance the Russians on the other side. It, it is impossible for India to uh, launch a challenge, in my view. Okay. Uh, I let's strongly say, endorse what he said. Okay, well, let's um, talk for once, me. you know, people don't agree, but I agree with him. <laughs> right. I think these strategic factors are very important. Yeah. Let me just mention, if I can carry on. Just yeah. one, just, I know what you're going to ask. But anyway, you know, on the trade wars, try yeah. to remember that the total volume of notified stuff yeah. For all countries, maybe in the region of 50 to 60 billion dollars. Remember, total trade even in bad days today is over almost 17 trillion dollars. So that's very far-fetched, Adam. That's one. Secondly, it's much more than the strategic part is also something else. The one thing that has been keeping us going, our balance of trade, is our balance of payment surplus in the past at least. And one major item in that has been export of services, not just software, but other things. Remember, your maximum foreign investment in India in the last few years outward is in these countries, the UK and US. Yeah. 
and with also follow the exports to these countries. So you've got to be very careful on the strategic part, you know. I mean, I think it's, I do believe he's a businessman and he won't hurt business. Yeah. He's not a wild okay. you know, politician which any others can okay. be. Uh, Professor Dhar, in addition to tariffs, why is the United States considering placing restrictions on Chinese investments in certain U.S. sectors and limiting the number of Chinese researchers and students uh, who are allowed to come to the United States? Is there a scare there that China would overtake the U.S. Uh, technologically? Yeah, of course, there is a very, very, very definite scare. Yeah. And uh, it is also true that, you know, if you look at uh, uh, all the indicators of, uh, of research and development uh, on, on, on technology, uh, China seems to be, you know, sort of overtaking the U.S. Uh, if you look at the number of patents mm. uh, uh, taken, you know, by the applications, um, uh, m uh, last year, the number of patents uh, uh, applications were 1.2 million in the in China, and uh, and in, in in the U.S. it was less than half, yeah, and on, on more than 80 percent of those applications were by the Chinese nationals. Yeah? So China is the only country where the uh, the nationals application by the nationals is more than the na applications by the foreigners. Yeah? So there are all these indicators, and, and that's why one of the things that, chi that um, uh, you know, one of the measures, one of the sort of attacks that uh, Trump had launched on the on the Chinese was on, on you know alleging that the Chinese were stealing U.S. intellectual property. Yeah. yeah? So there is a very you know clear you know sense of uh, unease that we see in the uh, the Americans that the the last, uh, you know, sort of bastion that they have, you know, because the only, um, you know, if you look at the overall uh, sort of payments balance, yeah. the only uh, surplus that they have is in the technology payments yeah. uh, today. Uh, in all other balances, they are actually running deficit. Yeah. Now, if they run, they start running a deficit vis-a-vis -vis China tomorrow, then I think the American economy you know, really goes into a tailspin. Can I put a little, Please. sorry, Go can on. I add a little thing, you know, this thing about China overtaking U.S. may happen. I don't think it's going to happen in the near future for a lot of reasons. I'll tell you why. There's a study which has been done which said if China is so high technology, in the, it should reflect in the export of goods. You know, if you remove from Chinese trade, exports to US, let's say. All the inputs that they get from South Asia, South Korea, Japan, which they put in, their value added is 6%. So actually they are not getting, so if you are a technology leader, you should be yeah. getting 95%. Not, so that's one. Okay. Second thing I'm saying that China in any case is a part of world trade, is only still about, you know, the total demand is about 9% of world. You are still pretty. Yeah. It'll take some time. Maybe yeah. it's true. No, Maybe no. it's a third. Let, no, let, let, let me finish. No, I finish. You know, let us let us understand. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'll finish, and then he can enter. I'm just saying that these are all things of the future. Yeah. But you know, 50 years from now, we may all be dead. I'm yeah. saying I don't see that happening okay. in the near future. Let's leave that question. Let me just yeah. uh, come to geopolitics uh, a bit. Uh, do you think you said that you know China would be very happy to see our tensions with uh, America grow? Do you think India and China are actually being pushed together by uh, American uh, 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 tariffs? Because a lot of people have said that the Wuhan summit was, uh, uh, you know, uh, partly a result of that. I don't buy that. You don't buy that. I okay. Don't buy that. And I, I believe that uh, India, China, the issues, geopolitical issues, are vastly different, and they cannot be sorted out by simple trade issues. I mean, it's elementary to... Uh, okay, uh, since you've been in EU, then tell me, uh, do you see any geopolitical implications uh, major. for what's happening in EU? Because of this, do you think NATO itself might be threatened? Major. It's major. He has already declared, and you know, we all know the numbers. Mm -hmm. Out of the 2% of GDP on defense spending, there are only two countries of the entire EU uh, that uh, spend over 2%. One of them is Estonia. Now. Uh, you please put your act together. He will, they cannot afford, it is the largest trade and investment relationship in the world even today between the US and the EU. Okay. There is no comparison to it. I think the EU will find, try, have to find ways, you know, the German economy will come to a standstill. They are yeah. so dependent on, and they are the powerhouse, they subsidize the rest of EU. 
I think EU will make a deal with him somehow or other. Okay, we've really run out of time. I would like to thank all of you, Ambassador Dinka Khuller, Professor Manoj Pant, Professor Bishwajit Dhar for participating in this discussion. That's all we have for you today. We'll be back again next week. Until then, goodbye and thanks for watching India's Eyes.